Hello, hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is James Jackson, and today we are finally, finally talking about the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button so you can get all the notifications of all the content on this channel as we do reviews of all sorts of gears, cameras, lights, and lenses, and specifically gear like this guy right here, the, gear, the camera that we are going to be talking about today, uh, the most highly anticipated Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. That's a mouthful, and that's probably going to be the last time you hear me say the full name, simply because I'm not trying to tire my tongue out uh, as it is. So from this point on, I'm going to call it the Pocket 4K. Of all the cameras I've um, reviewed, this one has been the most difficult camera to review simply because uh, I've been struggling at how to actually tackle this camera because there's so many angles of it. I try to, I've done this video probably several times just trying to review this camera. But after the last uh, trip that I had, my trip to Africa, um, I think I finally figured out how I want to do, tackle this review and basically I'm just going to give you my story of my experience with this camera the good the bad and the ugly because I feel like understanding my experience is probably going to help you understand sort of weed through if this is sort of a camera for you because ultimately what I feel about reviews especially for cameras is cameras is sort of like the sorting hat from the Harry Potter franchise you it, you just pick to see which ones just sort of magically fits you and specifically with this camera more than any other camera that I have came across this one is one that I really feel like you really need to sort of think about sort of what kind of a shooter you are and does this fit your needs so when this camera was announced by NAB I was super excited just like everybody else uh, about this camera and I just uh, I could not wait but I, I actually didn't decided to pre-order it because um, I would rather, through my means, the best means for me has always been going through Amazon. So I was sort of waiting for Amazon to show up. And there was a couple times it would show up and it was sort of by third party or people that was not really giving date, specific dates. So basically, I was basically a, a needy girlfriend basically waiting for to get that notification to see when is it when it when are they going to come when are they going to come and october 1st came around and all of a sudden an amazon prime showed up of the camera and all i clicked it i bought it immediately and at that point it came back three days later i ran all the way to the uh, deli delivery package to pick it up, grabbed it out, and that's sort of how it began. So when I first got this camera, I the first thing that came to my mind was, wow, this this felt light, and not only it felt light, it felt it did feel cheap, and it like it just it didn't feel like, and when I mean cheap, it didn't feel like if it took a beating, it could it could last, and. As someone who's been using other Blackmagic cameras before, this one I personally felt like, yeah, this definitely needed some upgrades and needed some things. But I was already anticipating that. So, but at the time that I got the camera, um, there wasn't really much accessories ready for it. But I still was trying to go out and test it. So I went out and and the first major problem I, I, that I came across was. The battery. The battery has been talked to death. Um, yes, the battery is bad. It is really bad. And for the for the longest time, I was trying to figure out how to solve the the battery solution. Initially, what I tried is I tried I got this monitor and I tried to power the camera through this. And when I tried to do that, it basically kill uh, basically the battery overheat and just stopped working. Like. 10 minutes after I started to turn on and started recording. So that was a no-go. Um, I tried a power brick solution that I bought. 
uh, that didn't work. And so I just stuck to the, um, the LP6 battery that came with it. And it just, it was frustrating to deal with because I never knew when it was going to go out. I couldn't see anything. But I kept, but I, but what I noticed was that the power cord that came with it, it would actually charge the LP6 battery in it. So I found a cool way of where when I wasn't shooting with it, I would just set it off to the side and I basically just let it ch charge up for a bit, pull it out and start recording. And sort of that was a way it extended the battery time in that meantime. Um, Eventually, I got to a shoot with a friend of mine where they, we were trying to put it on uh, the Ronin S. In the middle of the shoot, the camera just died. Like, just stopped working. At first, I just thought the battery's dead. Then I switched in to another LP Canon style battery. That wasn't working. I tried another one. That wasn't working. And then I tried to plug it in the wall. That still wasn't turned on. And my heart sunk because it was at that moment that I realized what happened and my worst fear came, came true. And I basically was um, irritated. I was uh, sad and disappointed by it. I took it home to see if I could get the battery life back. Nothing I would do would be able to turn it back on. So I had to uh, send it in to Blackmagic and send it over them and during that time, I was actually seriously wondering, do I even want this camera? Is it worth it if it's going to have reliable issues like I just experienced? Um, if that was a serious, serious client, that this camera was the re camera to rely on, um, that would have been money. That would have been a money that would have been a client. And I was really thinking during this time when it was away, should I want it? So about a week later, Blackmagic sent a new camera back to me. So overall, I felt the turnaround was pretty good. And I, want, I was very grateful that Blackmagic was able to assist me with the issue that I was having. And they sincerely sent me this one, and this is basically the one that I've been having since uh, that incident. At this point, I got a lot more of the accessories that I needed. And the very key accessory that I got was this guy right here. This is the Core SWX power base edge battery uh this is possibly one of my favorite little batteries i've decided I, i'm not dealing with power banks anymore for me um from that previous experience i pretty much learned that you know what this is a cinema camera i have to treat it like a cinema camera basically uh, I was not going to go with any cheap routes. I was not going to go with a power bank. I was not going to try to find some other... Offs. I was only sticking to professional batteries, V-mounts, and V-mount style batteries like this one. This one is a great battery solution. It gives you up to uh, three and a half hours of battery life just powering the camera. If you're powering other solutions like this external monitor here, you're going to get a little bit old under... Um, two hours and 40 minutes. So then I started putting this camera through its paces. I started doing tests and doing different shots and um, putting the images into my computer, I immediately started seeing just how gorgeous the image is coming off of this camera. The 4K, uh, just ProRes, not even talking about the RAW, oh, it was just, it's just, it's something that you don't see and a camera of this size and a camera at this price point. Eventually, I started putting it on actual paid gigs, and one of the first ones was a wedding that I did, um, and it performed beautifully. Um, it was amazing. Um, the thing was, we were shooting with a lot of GH5s and a lot of GH5Ss uh, for this wedding, and then I brought this as sort of more of a pickup camera, a camera sort of to just pick up um, 
some b-roll that you could sort of fill in and funny enough the director of the the, the main director video director of the the wedding yeah he was looking back at the footage and he told me that man the the, po the pocket camera just blew all the other cameras out of the water especially when we got to sort of the low light compared to the gh5 the gh5s still uh did pretty well the reception was not the best lit uh room it was not like completely dark but it was definitely dimly lit and this camera performed great i was mainly shooting at 3200 iso for like the 30 frames per second footage and then whenever i shot at 60 frames per second uh i shot at 6400 iso and the image still looked fantastic uh beautiful nice crisp uh images and i was i myself was amazed by just how good it was and he just brought it up it's like man I, I, I he was loving the images that were coming out of it he almost was <laughs> thinking about getting it now but he sort of invested in the gh5s and the, and recently he's got the gh5s then i took it out to other events i took it out to um uh, sort of a, a launch event. I've took it to out to birthdays just to see how it worked in a running gun situation because I know some people are looking at it like that even though it's not necessarily made to do that but also you know reds are not necessarily made to be running gun cameras but a lot of people use them for running gun cameras. With the monitor, with the battery and I didn't even have the hand grip or even the top grip at the time but just these alone this was able to get me through any sort of event shooting that I was doing. And I was able to just like get amazing, amazing footages that I can knock off of it. One of the great things about this setup with the small rig, by the way, everything besides the monitor and the battery is small rig. The cage, the hand, the top handle, and the side grip. And what's great about this is that these are all NATO rails. So what makes this so great is that I can set this whole camera rig up in a matter of minutes and just be ready to go. In less than like two minutes, I can put everything together and be ready to go. With the C200, I have to uh, set the I have to set up the scene, or if I'm going to set up the scene, or I'm going to have to turn the camera on, auto black balance it, which tat takes about 10-15 minutes to do correctly. Then I have to get my white balance and do all the, do all the other stuff. Put screw and everything is screwed on. So I have to screw on the top, the monitor, screw on the screw on the side handles, screw on the microphone handles, screw on the top handle, and it just takes time and time and time to just like it could easily take 20, 30 minutes to set this up. Where this 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 thing right here. If even with if I just took the the rails off and I just went with the battery, the side handle, the monitor, and the top handle, I can have that up in two minutes, two minutes, and I'm ready to go. And it's tiny and it's compact. And what I was learning more and more through the event shooting is that how well this camera handles in so many various lighting conditions it was able to handle any sort of lighting that I could throw at it. I mean, nothing too extreme, but as long as you had light hitting the sensor, this camera was doing impressively well. And like for a black magic camera, that is really, really something to be heard about. And what's even more fun through learning, th th learning through the cameras from the times I was shooting, and also through my own testing, is learning basically how to not necessarily use the ISO to compensate exposure, but sort of choosing the ISO that I want to choose because of how the dual native ISO works and how the dynamic range works with different ISO settings depending on what you choose. I've learned to sort of work with setting a certain ISO and basically lighting that way and basically just creating a great beautiful image um it's really refocused my way of thinking in terms of my way of filming and to the better of the ability and that is one of the things that i definitely can say about this camera is that this camera 
will definitely make you a better filmmaker if you're willing to commit to it. And now I want to sort of talk about the last portion of this review, which is the trip I had to Africa. Um, I went back to Togo, which is my wife's home country. And we basically had already a lot of stuff. And basically I took this camera, I took a Maverick Pro, my Maverick 2 Pro, and basically just a few, uh, just the battery, uh, the Olympus 12, the 100 lens, the side handle, the top handle, and the monitor, and that was basically it. And what was so amazing about this camera was how it dealt with the conditions. Because this, this is December, and this is the dry season over there, so there's a lot of dust, there's a lot of wind, and there their main capital, which is where mostly where I stayed in, is a coastal is a coastal city. So there was a lot of sand. So a lot of you know environmental things were uh, around this camera, um, and I it performed like a, a, it performed flawlessly. Um, I was amazed at some of the footages I was able to get with this camera, you know. People talk about like the lack of in-body stabilization. Um, I like to remind everybody there's not a single cinema camera out right now that has in-body image stabilization. The closest thing you have is probably the Evo One, but that's still electronic image stabilization. To me, IBIS has never been a major, uh, a major thing for me and for most cinema cameras because we put things on gimbals and steady cams. But even like with just this, with just this, I was able to just go out and just film and capture moments like this um yes i definitely turned heads when i did that but when you're pretty much the only person in the entire area that has a complexion like mine you're gonna get heads turns no matter what so you might as well just make the most of it i I got a lot of shooting out there. I shot just for fun. I also shot a commercial for a hotel out there. And like I said, the camera just was able to capture so much. The, uh, lot, the hotel commercial was shot at night. So, it, and so we had to again deal with low light conditions and the camera uh, handled it flawlessly. There's a couple of features that I really noticed and I really took pleasure of. One of them was the 120 frames per second in 1080. Um, typically, I don't really touch 120 frames per second simply because I hardly ever t I hardly ever use it. Um, I mostly shoot at 4K 24 frames and 30 like 90 like 75 percent of the time, and then 20 percent of the time, and then 25 percent of the time I'm shooting in 4K 60. So almost, I'm almost never shooting 120 frames per second, but I wanted to see sort of how it would work. And I know a lot of people talked about how soft it was, but I was still amazed just how good the 120, uh, just how nice. And it just had a nice organic smoothness to it. And the 120 frames per second, it's definitely soft, but as long as you know how to focus, but but it's, I think it's more to do with the focus necessarily than the softness of it, but it's definitely softer than 4K. But it's still very detailed. It's still very nice looking slow motion. You just sort of have to think about your shooting when you're shooting in the window mode. And then regarding the dynamic range of this camera, there's one particular moment in my trip when I was in Accra in Ghana and we were at this park. And one of the things that we uh, saw was this tree that had a large gaping hole that you can actually climb into and go inside and climb up inside the tree. And I sort of did this sort of push into the tree and sort of went up to see the people that were inside of it and the the the, the range of 
that you have in terms of images that are not clipping is like still stunning to me. It's only 13 stops, but the 13 stops is still amazing because I, I was like in the brightest part. So the outer part, which is like very, very bright and then going into the tree, which is super dark and still have all the information and not clipping and not ha losing any like losing any of the blacks. I was floored by the image thing out of this. So after this long run, you're probably wondering where I sort of sit. If you can't figure out how I ended it with this uh, review, you should know that I, I love this camera. I love this camera a lot. Um, it's a camera that you have to be prepared for. Do not try to make this camera something that it is not. It's not a mirrorless camera. It may be mirrorless, but it's not a mirrorless camera. This is not a prosumer camera. This is a cinema camera. This is a professional camera. You need to treat it like a professional camera. Do not look at it like, like this camera right here. Don't look at it, don't have this like the GH5. This is, this is not the GH5. Or, and it's, it's, it's definitely not, you know, like, this rebel t like this rebel ti right here it's not it's not one of, it's not one of these so <clears throat> you have to know that there's things that you have to add on you're going to add on a monitor because when you're shooting low it's really hard to get low shots and there's some shots that i was doing um over in africa that i would not have gotten and i would not be able to see how my frame was if i didn't have this monitor right here. So you're gonna need an external monitor. You're definitely gonna need some sort of battery solution. And I've always, I always say, whatever you would put on say, a put a say on a Red or an Ari Alexa or even on an Ursa Mini, the type of batteries, whatever you would put on those batteries, that's the type of battery you should put on this camera. And simply put, this is a camera that is producing professional codexes for you. You need to treat it with professional power if you really want to take this camera seriously for what it's, it is capable of doing. So I guess we should decide who is this camera for. And essentially for me, it, if you are someone who is trying to study the game of film and, study, and want to really learn the film industry, you want to learn video, you really learn cinema, you want to really learn how to do it if you're a film student, if you're a spying filmmaker. I, 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 there is not, there's not a better camera I can, t I can, I can give for you. This is the perfect camera to start off if you are one of those people, because this will teach you everything that you would. This is going to teach you how to work in those type of environments. It will teach you how to work with not continuous autofocus, which is most product high-end productions do. They all focus mainly manual because a lot of the lenses that they have here are manual focus. Um, this camera will have you working with different accessories. So it's, it's good to get those accessories so when you sort of step up and go on to other lar uh, professional, not even more professional, but bit, maybe bigger bodies or more well-known cinema cameras, you've already got all the professional equipment you need. Um, it will make you, it will make you understand lighting. It will make you understand, um, audio. By the way, I haven't even talked about the audio. The phantom power on this device is amazing. I, I'm actually surprised at just how good the phantom power is on this camera. So I gotta say kudos to you, Blackmagic, because you're the only ones that I've actually seen that actually try to put serious lighting in this camera and I am definitely grateful for that. But who is this camera not for? Let me put it this way. If you're gonna ask yourself, should I get this camera or should I get the a7 III or should I get the GH5S or the GH5, especially if you're thinking between the GH5 and the a7 III and this camera, if those are the cameras or ESR or the Nikon Z6, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. if those are the cameras you have to consider you're debating between this camera and those cameras, this camera's not for you. Because, <laughs> and I would just say, just go with those cameras. Again, it's this, this is all about finding the camera for you. But I can tell you, 
because you're not gonna like the you're not gonna like the lack of continual autofocus. You're not gonna like the lack of any articulation on the screen. You're not gonna like the fact that you're probably gonna have to buy purchase uh, professional batteries to make it truly work. You're not gonna like the fact of all the additional add-ons you're gonna have to add, even though it's thirteen hundred dollars. Um, it's it's really more like thirty five hundred dollars after everything you add on. Basically, what I'm trying to say is really know what type of filmmaker you are. If you are somebody that is willing to, you know, put the investment, this is a camera that you have to decide, are you going to invest in this business? Are you really gonna seriously invest in this business? Because if you are, this camera will serve you well. If you're not and you're saying you're just trying to get a camera to just sort of get your feet wet or just a camera that sort of just takes on more of the work than what this camera requires for you, then that's fine. The, the A7 III is a lovely camera. The GH5 is a lovely camera. The GH5S is an, a great camera. You know, the Nikon Z6, the ESR, they all look like really solid good cameras. Those may be your options. At the end of the day, I couldn't be happier with this camera. I love this camera. I love the images that I can get out of it. I love the fact that I'm able to learn. I'm able to just, I'm able to make, this camera makes me a better filmmaker. And that's one of the things that is really hard to find with a good camera. This camera actually makes me, forces me to be a better filmmaker to work with this camera. It, it makes filming fun. It makes filming fun and that's one of the best things I can say about this camera. It is absolute fun to film with this camera and just be creative with it. And I think I've held up your time long enough. Uh, hopefully you guys do enjoy it. I hope my experience with this camera helped you sort of decide if this is a camera for you. Um, I definitely say, again, if you are somebody that really is into cinema, you really wanna be like a f in the film, you're really into just pushing your creativity, there's no better camera to me at this price point for what it offers you. And I haven't even gotten to the fact that you get DaVinci for free, a full studio, for free. This is a video camera that shoots 4K 60p raw and costs $1,300. This camera costs $1,300. This is a video camera that shoots 4K 60p raw that costs $1,300. $1,300, like, there's nothing, there's there's no competition to this camera in this price range. This camera has no competition. So anybody that brings up the G, none of them are competitions to this camera for what it is designed and for what its purpose. But leave a comment below. Let me know if you got the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Let me know what you think about it. If you're interested in the Pocket 4K, let me know which, if there's something else that I haven't brought up that you may be interested in knowing. And as I said at the beginning, hit the subscribe button. I got more content coming. Until next time, guys, take care.